a podcast. Chris, you used to work for uh, Chuck Schumer. What was the point of that? I, he was telling the truth. Civility's gone. Civility's been gone for a very long time in that United States Senate. So I don't know what anybody's worried about here. I don't think anything he said was inappropriate or false. It was 100% accurate. The debt ceiling used to just be a pro forma vote. Now the Republicans want to hold the entire planet's economy hostage for political gain. It's ridiculous. They were going to lose the filibuster over it, which is why they came back and voted for it. And they will vote for it again in December, or they will lose the filibuster there. As for Joe Manchin, look, I, I know he's got to play to the cameras back home in West Virginia, but not a lot of people are watching C-SPAN, but he's lucky it went viral. Yeah, it, did, it definitely went viral. Um, this also went viral. Uh, Bernie Sanders talking about uh, both Joe Manchin and Kristen Cinema. Take a listen. I know a lot of the media talks about, you know, compromise and all that stuff. We got 48 senators who support three and a half trillion. We got two who do not. But it is wrong. It is really not playing fair that one or two people think that they should be able to stop what 48 members of the Democratic caucus want, what the American people want, what the president of the United States wants. I don't know, Professor Nichols, maybe uh, the senator needs to come to your class. It's not how it works. Uh, it's 48 against 52 right now. You need a majority. This isn't horseshoes. Uh, put that aside, because obviously Bernie Sanders knows how the Senate works. Uh, it's not fair? Is that really what the arguments come to now? Well, I think they feel as though, you know, a member of their caucus is holding things up. And there are things that the American people actually want. The American people want... Uh, they want child care, they want universal pre-K, they want uh, debt relief uh, for education. These are things that the American people want and it seems like two people are holding it up. I understand, I think it's unfair actually to put Joe Manchin in the same category as Kristen Cinema. I think Joe Manchin has given his reasoning. He's even given some numbers that he thinks would make more sense or would be more sensible. Uh, whereas Kristen Cinema has said nothing except expletives on Twitter. Yeah. So I think putting them in the same category is a little unfair uh, by Senator Sanders. I, I think that they don't belong in the same sentence there. Uh, Kristen Cinema is in a different category. It's interesting. This is going to come down actually conceivably to real negotiations rather than simply yelling at each other on, on television and trying to go viral, uh, as entertaining as that is. This is what is in the $3.5 trillion bill that right now is dead. $108 billion community college, $450 billion child care, $800 billion Medicare expansion, $110 billion child tax credit, $30 billion affordable housing. Uh, $3 billion is there for tr uh, tree equity, but somehow you got to get from 3.5 down to at least somewhere in the, the low twos or the high ones, Chris. Uh, we've heard every progressive on television talk about what their priorities are. Nobody's talking about what they're willing to cut out of this. What pork gets trimmed? Here's my plan, Leland. Cut the whole thing in half. Make it a five-year bill instead of a 10-year bill. Then it's $1.75 trillion. If people are happy with it after five years, they can elect Democrats or Republicans willing to support it going forward. If they're unhappy with it, they could vote them out. $1.75 trillion. Everybody's happy. It's $175 billion a year, which is a fraction of our military spending. And since we just ended a war, we should have some extra money laying around in the military budget that we can put the things here at home that the American people want. J Jason, I'm going to get you, because you're a professor and a scholar of history, to point out the slight intellectual dishonesty of your friend in the sense that there has never <laughs> been a government program, as Ronald Reagan would say, that has ended. They are the only things that have eternal life. Yeah, I, I, I actually uh, agree uh, with Chris here. And I, and I just want to say that I think that um, when we look at the debt ceiling and some of the things that are happening, uh, that I think uh, Democrats are, you know, trying to get these things passed for the American people. It's really important to American priorities. And we had the money to do so. But the tax cuts that we have and all the tax loopholes for corp corporations, if we started to close them, we wouldn't even necessarily need a whole lot of uh, new revenue. I think that this could be paid for, particularly if we cut the time limit in, in half, like Chris said. So I'm not going to say that that's intellectually dishonest. I think that that's actually fair.
Fair, fair, Chris, that you you're going to say that we're going to end a government program in five years. Has there ever been an entitlement program put into practice that was then reined in later on? Leland, if you put a time limit on it for five years and it's got to be reauthorized five years from now, the people will decide. Oh, okay. So, so do it's they like want the people who put that program there? It, do they want the, that, the people who pro, put that program in there to give an opportunity to do it again? Or do you want to elect people who are against putting that program in? So it's, it's the Hold American people who get like to decide. You're, you're, you're almost sort of describing like what was the Bush tax cuts that had an expiration date and therefore they were going to end. You have a five-year bill that ends. When it ends, is either it's reauthorized for additional money or it's not. That's your proposal. Right. Okay, so Why you not? Keep, you keep I all think the it programs, makes perfect sense. You keep all the programs the way they are. Uh, Jason, does it surprise you at all, or maybe I'll put it a different way, what's the strategy by progressives to not actually be willing to talk about cutting anything out of this bill and instead just talking about their priorities? Do they really think that Manchin and Cinema are going to sort of succumb to the shame that we saw Bernie Sanders trying to throw out? Well, I think one of the things that we should have learned uh, even going back to the Clinton administration, since you know we're talking a little bit of history, is that when things get unpopular in government, you take it directly to the American people. And when you take things and your message to the American people and let them choose, what are you, what are you gonna choose between a child tax credit or free community college? And I think all of those things are very popular with the American people and they're gonna say, hey, we want all of that. Uh, those are things that we, we want. And uh, I think that's the way to go about this. People who depend upon votes are going to go with what their voters say. And I think even when you go to Republicans and you talk to Republicans, even the hardcore red states, and you break this down line item, what are the things that you like in it? They like it. Yeah, so I'm not, think, I'm not, um, yeah there's there's the there's some that, there's some things that pull well in in red states. There's a lot there's a lot that doesn't. Uh, hey, gents, uh, it's a great conversation. Nancy Pelosi has given a new deadline, Halloween, uh, for this. So uh, we'll be back uh, next Friday talking about it and see if there's any uh, any movement on the price tag. Nice to see you both. Good seeing nice you, Leland. Hey, great to see you, see you, Chris. you guys. All right, now we move on to COVID, and there's been a lot of discussion.